so i will introduce the uh, you know guest for that uh, uh, panel discussion so we have uh, mr jay choudhury uh, jay choudhury garu is the founding director of the software technology parks of india at uh, bangalore hyderabad and chennai in fact you might remember like uh, high tech city hyderabad everybody says high tech city so he is one of the chief architect of that high tech city and currently he is the chairman of indian blockchain standards committee and uh, he is a general partner of succeed innovation fund and he is a former it advisor and special secre- chief secretary to chief minister of andhra pradesh in 1990s in fact jay choudhury sir played a key role you know uh, uh, he is also co-founder of portal player which was acquired by nvidia in 2007 in fact his company has led the development of the chip that went into the first generation of ipod so that was a revolutionary you know thing from you know cassettes cd players to ipod so power portal player played a key role and jay choudhury sir was a you know co-founder of it and we are also happy to you know share with you that jay choudhury is uh, one of the board members of atal incubations so he is with us he'll be joining and uh, we have dr sheshadri secretary of indigenous and frontiers technology research center so he is also coordinator for tbi satyabhama university and he is a co-founder and director of uh, several uh, you know companies like deepam biotech um, then e2 e2e biotech then uh, he is uh, actually he started his career as a microbiology scientist and moved you know taken various roles as scientist and assistant professor and dean r&d uh, at murugappa chittiya research institute then he has got 70 plus publications now he has uh, also a member trustee of several trust like ananya foundations indian biomass association and so on so he so in recently has started such sundaram ventures as well so then we have james uh, is a senior project advisor with the center for social innovation and entrepreneurship at iit madras he is a sustainable development expert with 15 years of experience in promoting number of small industries um and not profit organizations especially in the areas such as health livelihood and jobs creation so his core expertise is in formulating market based solutions for the development of social welfare indicators so in fact james is a te- uh, textile technologist and uh, he obtained his innovation management degree from germany and uh, we also have uh, maithili rege she is a manager of agri business incubation and investment portfolio uh from wilgro uh, you know wilgro agro business uh, uh social incubation we all know you know those are in ecosystem they have recently celebrated their two decades of uh, you know uh, role in uh, establishing uh, and setting up social and agri incubation uh, centers uh, so she manages uh, agro business portfolio and she has got like six plus years of experience in fmcg heavy industries and social sectors and she also worked in hindustan unilever and sr group so she holds a ba in economics from st xavier's college mumbai and mba from iim ahmedabad then we have dr mallareddy garu uh, he is a director of akain fraterna ecology center so dr mallareddy uh, worked with rural development trust is one of the biggest uh, you know social trust located in uh, anantapur so you know the beneficiaries are more than 10 lakh people you know directly and indirectly from the rdt so he he worked in this uh, you know uh, organization for 42 years uh, he works with farmers landless and other communities covering more than 235 villages in anantapur district so yes, his work mainly involves around drought mitigation rain fed agriculture combating desertification uh, through uh, you know uh, my, uh, watershed management and sustainable agriculture and diversified livelihood and he is also a full bred fellow and uh, he has received a number of awards uh, like jalamitra award and uh, individual contribution for integration international integration in 2013 by global achievers foundation uh, you know presented in bangkok thailand so uh, we have diversified uh, panel members academia industry investment uh, bureaucrat and uh, you know experts working at the bottom of the pyramid you know working with the people at the bottom of the pyramid so we give we we you know put up this uh, different diversified uh, experts here just to you know ensure that we cover 360 degree uh, when you are talking about entrepreneurship uh, and the challenges that is faced so to start with uh, you know uh, discussion uh, dr sheshadri you are a microbiologist uh, professor and then now you are a serial entrepreneur and uh, why is it a challenge uh, even today uh, for the universities and colleges to improve the innovation quotient 
ip assets and for the technology spin offs right so what are the factors that you know uh, you think uh, uh, that is creating these challenges at the university levels so oh, thank you so much uh, hope i am audible now uh, yes, because yes. i am traveling of course we have parked the car on the side it's fine so the thing is thank you so much for the opportunity and thank you the entire team and i must compliment also for coming up with wonderful discussions and uh, coming to this this is a very pertinent question in fact uh, i must thank navin lakur and dr balachandran for giving a wonderful positive and uh, i mean uh, the appreciable note about the developments happening in the country you know, why i am setting this context is purely because i want to give something also in this area that's why i am trying to bring a context to this uh, dr balachandran was talking about the enabling ecosystem dr navin lakur was talking a much about the i mean what is entrepreneurship and also the engines and the wheels and also bogies all these things so if we want all these things to happen everything should start somewhere from the bottom the if you if you see if you talk from the words of sikhe prahlad i see the knowledge group as the bottom of the pyramid and the universities and the education institutions forms base for that and if that to happen we need to change the way we also work with the educational institutions that is a most important requirement and of course the government also is on the line changing the way the education works with the new education policy but still it has to go a long way i would say the why i am telling this is i am also working i am trying to tread the path both one way it's academia or other one is research third one is development in all the areas i am trying to place my legs and i don't want to touch upon all the other areas except few things one is the attitudes and the ego knowledge management or the learning path or learning curve of the faculties and the students both i would say so why i am trying to bring the faculties is the faculties play a major role in creating the enabling ecosystem in the educational institutions that's the most important one we need to really see we might ask will it not will this kind of startups happen without the education institutions yes it might happen but knowingly or unknowingly we are the producers of large number of or i would say millions of students every year coming out of the education ecosystem institutions in india and if you see that that is a large I mean ecosystem that drives that is going to drive the entire country in future and india being a country of uh, with the youngest uh, population i would say means the younger generation population between 20 and 40 we have around 30% now that is a prediction is going to be there till 2060 also that means we have the responsibility to create a enabling ecosystem for both the entrepreneurs and also students to come up with kind of new ideas and come up with uh, ideas of standing on their own legs and this has to happen from the faculties and students that means the attitudinal change even when i go and talk to the students i used to ask one question how many of you are three questions i used to ask one question is how many of you are from business families first second thing how many of you would like to start a business third thing how many of you have ideas so if you ask the first question you can get at least 40% of students raising their hands but then the second and third questions you can see only 5% hands raising other things will just like that fade fade away this is purely because the entire enabling ecosystem created by the government or the world or the other uh, agencies are not still fully percolated in the educational institutions the campuses are the enablers and the faculties are the key people for that to happen and this corona also has given a wonderful opportunity for all people to think in a different format so that's why i'm just trying to say this has to start from that entire educational ecosystems but the if you see the one thing i said is the attitude the second one is the fear factor among the people right from the faculties to students both second the fear factor the third thing the technology most of the time we talk about different technologies but if you see the technology thought what the student or the ideator has in mind and the technology requirement of the entire external ecosystem and the maturity level of the technology or the robustness of the technology has a big gap between this thought process mismatch is there so that gap has to be filled by the faculties or the so called 
the new terminology we use here is mentors the faculties are the first mentors and then comes the real mentors from the i mean the industrial ecosystem or the social ecosystem or be it from any ecosystem but the first mentoring starts from the faculty side this is the third thing and for the thing i would say still i would say is as dr balachandran listed out in one of his slides there are gaps in the i mean regulatory systems also where the students start even one i do you were also asking about reading his questions he was asking how and where i can start the education system should be in a position to show them how they can come and knock the doors without fear asking questions to the faculties or the managers or the bosses of this kind of systems and the students always have have a fear whether i can go and knock the doors of the vice chancellor or the registrar or even the head of the department or the tba so the fear factor should be pulled out of this system and another thing i would say is the skills the skill sets of the students why i am bringing all these things is i am one of the vocalist in telling telling people also all the education system educational institutions should have two things or uh, two elective courses one is on design thinking second one on innovation entrepreneurship all students be it 10000 student or 20000 students all students should undergo these two things with this i stop let others speak we will catch up with late, them later right. thank you so much for the thank you thank you sir i know you have covered actually uh, quite number of points and uh, that would lead to further questions to you know miss james uh, sir as uh, dr sheshadri was talking about uh, you know empowering the faculty orienting them and having the right attitudes and uh, you know fear factor and such things and i believe incubation centers would uh, you know help in that regard so you have been with the you know uh, iit madras uh, you know rural incubation social innovation and entrepreneurship center so in the country we have almost 700 plus incubation centers and i, I think it's going to increase year on year so how do you see the role of these incubators in bridging the gap between societal needs and learning outcomes from education institutions because learning outcomes are not matching with the societal needs you know and that's where uh, the there is a dichotomy between the outcomes and i you know uh, industry and uh, dr sheshadri also i you know uh, partly mentioned that point so do you how do you think the incubators could help in that line uh, uh, thank you thank you uh, thanks for the invitation and uh, i hope i am audible yes, am i yes. audible yeah okay uh, Sorry. so uh, Uh, to start with uh, what we at iit madras practice to address the concerns of uh, actual technological needs and uh, solving the social problems uh, first we we'll, uh, i I, uh, i will give couple of examples of uh, kinds of initiatives that other incubators uh, incubators and universities can start uh, one is uh, to address the f- uh, fear factors the attitude attitude and other uh, cultural factors that dr sheshadri was addressing it's very um, as an innovator or as an entrepreneur it's important the most important part of this journey innovation journey is the inhibition of all these uh, negative uh, psychological factors cultural factors and come up and uh, think innovatively to solve new problems or social problems and for that uh, at iit madras uh, there is a center uh, it's called the center for innovation c5 which uh, allows uh, it's a it's a, at least 5000 square feet uh, center which allows free hands to students so where students right from first year till the final year and also the post graduates doctoral students they can form teams interdisciplinary uh, and they can conceive of new ideas and they can come up with a plan budget and after all these things they can seek the approval from the coordinator from the mentor and once it is approved they can start the project and they can complete it and there is no interference from any of the faculty or a mentor or coordinator unless demanded so students can demand uh, either uh, so that it's uh, proactive students come up with 
uh, if they have any problems, they go and ask. So it's a free, uh, it's a laissez-faire atmosphere of innovation development that has uh, uh, contributed to a large extent for the successful um, uh, uh, successful development of innovation ecosystem at IIT Madras, and that uh, culminates in these uh, ideas becoming projects, projects becoming uh, prototypes, and then prototypes becoming startup enterprises, and many of them are commercially successful with uh, large funding, follow-on funding, and they are pioneers. For instance, Ether electric vehicles, and we have underwater underwater uh, unmanned systems. So there are so many examples of uh, innovations coming from C5. And that is because of removal of these inhibitory factors. That's first thing. Second, I also address uh, the gap between uh, the technological solutions and the social needs. And it's very often the uh, Dr. Seshadri also talked about design thinking, uh, such new concepts, uh, not real new concepts, but which are very much relevant in addressing this particular gap. Because uh, in uh, many of the cases where I have interacted and also with uh, research studies, there is a huge gap between what the problem seekers want and what uh, the technologists at universities, innovators, and uh, entrepreneurs they can provide. There is a huge uh, gap or it's mismatch. And uh, IIT Madras innovation ecosystem addresses this uh, through a new initiative called uh, Gopala Krishnan Deshpande uh, Innovation uh, GDIC, which uh, has the mandate, which identifies the technologists, innovators, researchers from universities and simply ask them to do to go on a uh, yatra. Yatra is to identify at least 100 people who will buy their technology, who will need their technology. And uh, uh, interestingly, when these people, after their uh, uh, six or seven week journey, when they come back, they either say that our, uh, they agree that either their solutions does not match the requirements or it needs modifications or they give up or they go ahead. So that's uh, that's a kind of an eye, eye opener which uh, this particular initiative provides. And these uh, with this, I stop here uh, before I uh, others can uh, share their views where one need in innovation infrastructure through initiatives like C5, and another initiative like GDIC, which enables the researchers to meet the problem seekers. Uh, with this, I stop, and I um, we can share. I can share later. Thank you. You are on mute. Sure, Shrikaran, you are on mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I realized it just now. <laughs> so, yeah, Maithili, Maithili it's, this question is to Maithili. So, you know, Wilgro, you have been with Wilgro uh, for several years and uh, Wilgro is being a top-notch social incubator in the country. So in your view, what would be the three major constraints or pitfalls, uh, you know, you would have come across with the startups, especially if they are from the rural sectors. So like, uh, for example, this is our context, Anantapur is in a village sector, the kind of startups are the, you know, innovative ideas that come here. And when they pitch to incubators like you, or, you know, for investment, what would be the three important points you would look at, especially, you know, uh, in social angle? Um, so is the question about what we look at at the time that they apply or uh, what are the key hurdles they face in, in growing? No, what are the three constraints you would like to look, uh, you know, while in investing, uh, you know, if you want to say no to them or if you want to say yes to them, what three okay. key factors you would look at? Right. So I think... Um, more than uh, three, I think I can like bring that down to two key factors that we look at. Um, one is focus and two is evidence. So I'll come to what I mean by both. So I think what typically tends to happen, and this is not regarding uh, uh, rural startups, this is regarding any startup, that the team has 
potentially an interesting technology. They've identified a need gap, they've figured out a solution, and they've come up with a basic technology. And once they've got that technology, they're just sort of, without checking what the environment, uh, is, how to plug it into the environment, they're just sort of going uh, more and more into that technology. For example, if I was to give an example in, say, the um, uh, grading sorting essay market today, there is, a, there is a need gap, right? There isn't enough technology. Everything is being done manually. Uh, startups like Intello Labs, et cetera, have got big funding um, in that space. But there are so many smaller startups that have also come in that space. But why have they really not gotten uh, that much limelight? Because I think they've taken that tech, but they've sort of spread it out across various crop types. So when we ask them that, uh, how is this, how is your, how is your uh, technology useful for, say, tomatoes or onions or potatoes? There are no clear answers. There are, uh, if we ask them how the technology can be used differently uh, for, say, fruits, there are no clear answers. So what we have found impressive in the past is when they have taken a solution, one technology, but gone deep in one area. So it said that, okay, you know what? We've done enough number of pilots on oranges. And we know that from the entire value chain, this is the customer. This is the problem of the customer. This is how my solution will address each one of those problems, including price point. And this is how I will go to market. So when they show that kind of clarity in their business plan with, uh, with that focus, that is what we find interesting, as opposed to bringing the techno raw technology and saying that we're we're sort of talking to twenty people but not moving ahead with anyone. So I think deep crop focus is something that we look at, especially for um, agri uh, startups. And if one were to extrapolate that to non-agri startups, I think focus in um, one subsector of uh, application in your technology, and then the idea is once you've commercialized, you can always anyway access the others. Um, and I think the second thing that we um, usually find as a positive in their applications is if they've shown some gumption to be able to pilot it. Um, an MVP completed, at least piloted with a few farmers, are those pilot, um, is the process of the pilot and the outcomes of the pilot recorded? Can they express that to us so that we know what this technology looks like on ground? If they have focus and if they're able to show how they have used it on the ground, even with a small pilot, we're convinced that this team has clarity about what they're talking about and what they want to do. And then we're really uh, excited to bring them on board and help them scale and overcome whatever hurdles that they have. Uh, uh, thank you, Maithili. You know, that would uh, lead to the, my next uh, subsequent question to Malaridi sir, because he has been with, uh, you know, uh, RDT, Rural Development Trust, which has been working with farmers like 60,000 plus farmers at 235 villages. So, you know, at the base level, what is the problem, sir, for the village level, if they want to create entrepreneurial spirit and ecosystem? And Maitri was talking about focus and evidence. How do you, what is the challenge you would have seen, uh, you know, to ensure that kind of thing at, uh, you know, rural youth? You know, because uh, their academic levels will not be, you know, as far with the guys who are studying at IAMs and other things. Uh, and they would have seen a lot of IAM based uh, guys coming and setting up the, you know, village. Uh, rural uh, you know, innovation centers, but rural guys, uh, we don't find much addressing their own problem. So what is your you know, viewpoint, sir? Sir, your uh, mic is mute, sir. Sir, your mic is mute. Thank you very much, uh, Kiran Garu, and thank uh, very much AAC and SKU for uh, organizing this kind of a, a workshop. It's very, very, uh, interesting and uh, I think it will certainly throw some light on how to approach you know, uh, in a place like Anantapu uh, with promoting entrepreneur. Yeah, I, yeah, I would like to uh, just quote one or two examples of ours where uh, I think it will give us some idea maybe how we can uh, go about it and also what are the barriers then how we have to really overcome them. <laughs> See, um, two years back, we uh, wanted, uh, you know, some of our women to be involved in government industry uh, uh, as government makers from villages. And then we actually discussed with uh, some of the uh, industry people in uh, Bangalore. And we convinced one of the uh, industri industry actually to start a government unit in uh, a small uh, decentralized kind of government units in three cluster centers. Uh, in villages where uh, women can be drawn. We have trained them in actually government mode of industrial production and so on and so 
those uh, centers were set up there in three villages. But unfortunately, that has failed. And then we try to analyze why that has failed and what was the problem. The problem, main problem we faced there was actually there were a lot of cultural barriers. Uh, you know, the industry uh, wanted actually them to be uh, following the biometric system and then come on time, you know, leave on time and then be present there and to uh, follow the discipline and things like that. And whereas uh, in the village, the women, they are not used to that kind of this thing and then they were coming on their own when they like, like one hour late, half an hour late and so on. We, uh, uh, that was one uh, uh, part of it. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, we see a lot of difficulties for them also in uh, following this kind of an industrial culture. Uh, practical difficulties were also there because they have to really look after at home and you know, uh, uh, they have to look after uh, uh, home and also children and then uh, look after the older people and then come for work. It doesn't work like that. So that way, that's why there was a bit of mismatch, cultural mismatch in uh, uh, actually uh, making it work. And we, we really uh, had to dismantle the whole system because it did not uh, work. But then we did not uh, really give it up and then we tried to see what were the lessons from there. The lessons from there was that, uh, that yes, we will have to really overcome this cultural kind of a uh, barrier or uh, make it suit to their kind of a cultural context. So then we actually encouraged the same women uh, uh, who were uh, trained by us in making the garments that they can sell in their own villages and they can do it in their own way and in their own, uh, uh, in their own time, not necessarily a nine to five and things like that. And then we actually help them to set up uh, uh, you know, those kind of centers where there is some flexibility and things like that. And then also the kind of garments they were making for industry was more, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, low end, but still uh, uh, some kind of a low end garment industry. But here, what we are now promoting is uh, uh, mostly what uh, women are using in villages like uh, langas, nighties, and you know, things like, uh, like that, which they know actually very well. And, which they can also sell very well. So today, after uh, six uh, to eight months of this initiative, we are happy to say 40 women are involved in this. Uh, and 40 women are really earning every month uh, almost nine to 10,000 rupees. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I think that really made a big difference. There are barriers even now, there are also problems. But each one is an entrepreneur now, actually. There is no other entrepreneur. So they come they stitch and they also uh, go out and they sell it they take them to the neighboring villages in their own village also here and there and they uh, they sell so it is uh, it is really giving us a ray of hope how to approach i don't say that we have learned everything but still uh, certainly it gives us a ray of hope the second thing similarly uh, we have uh, done by now most probably maybe about 2000 women in anantapur district particularly uh, you know uh, uh, in rural areas only I am talking about. So where uh, women are encouraged to do small businesses, small businesses uh, means very very small businesses like petty shop and then uh, uh, selling saris, or, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, anything that they, they want to do, even vegetables sometime, flowers sometime or whatever it is. Other than uh, farming and farm labor, anything for us, uh, for them, if we can convince them is uh, really uh, uh, bringing, uh, making them entrepreneurs. So that is how we are approaching actually. So over 2000 women are now actually involved in what we call diversifying their livelihoods, which is again, is a very, very big challenge because this diversif diversification calls for entrepreneurship in them and uh, that they have to really take a bold step to step into something different than what uh, for generations these families have been doing in farming and farm, uh, farm labor. And we are, I'm talking about particularly bottom of the rural pyramid, particularly the uh, landless and then, uh, you know, part-time, part labor, part cultivators, part labor kind of uh, uh, women we are talking about. We see that each one of them are able to add every day 300 to 400 rupees income by doing this kind of uh, uh, diversified uh, livelihood. So I think the, this is, uh, I mean, I, 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 we will have to conceptualize our interventions in rural areas around these kind of concepts, which are very simple, bring them out uh, uh, in them, bring, uh, you know, uh, to do something uh, different than what they are doing. And that itself is a challenge, but still I think now we are able to set good number of examples where uh, 
they are really able to come out and do something and then really show a way, uh, way out. I tell you the barriers that are biggest barriers that we have seen in this uh, are the cultural barriers, particularly for women, because we are working particularly with women uh, uh, in, this, uh, in this sector. Uh, so they're, they're, they're most of the time they are under the control of you know their own husbands or their in-laws and things like that. The, the fact that they will have to go out and do other than farm work uh, itself really puts off many of them. And they really face a lot of problems uh, you know, from their in-laws and husbands. Very few of them. So we actually are working with the family in this and we discuss with husbands, we discuss with in-laws, we see them, we show them how you know, in the next village a woman is doing and then expose them and all that. Create a kind of uh, you know, uh, understanding on how this works and things like that. So, but it is a very, very, uh, you know, uh, yeah, a lot of work uh, to do this, uh, you know, counseling the family and convincing them to come out for this kind of a work uh, like that. But still, I think what we can see nowadays is, you see, the crisis is bring us, bringing the opportunity, actually. The crisis in agriculture is very deep in Anantapu. So, so people really do not see much hope in agriculture. So people have a tendency to look for what else. So uh, what else can be done so that we will be able to make a living other than simply migrating as a, in, in distress to Bangalore, or maybe you know, Hyderabad and th uh, things like that. I think there is an energy in this crisis. So we are trying to see how they can add a little bit of income to their uh, uh, being, at, being at home. I think that is the strength that we are trying to uh, you know, uh, capitalize on. So they will be at home. And even if they earn 300 rupees, 250 rupees a day, that is a big income for them. But if they have to really move from home and start somewhere, even in their uh, Mandal headquarters or Anandapur headquarters, even uh, 500 rupees a day or 600 rupees a day becomes a small income because they will have to, opportunity costs are much more for them and so on. So I think this is how we will have to really, uh, uh, you know, uh, go about in rural areas, really. Uh, uh, starting making them, enabling them to do something new, something innovative, something different than what they are doing. I think that will uh, provide a good energy, you know, for other people. You know, seeing that each other, I think they are actually encouraged much more, and they are inspired by their own kind of women's initiatives that are taking place. Right. Uh, uh, I think uh, we have you no know, taken a good number of points from you, and we'll come back with the second set of discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, sir. So uh, I welcome Jay Choudhury Garo. Uh, no, sir has been, you know, he joined uh, uh, right now. Sir, good morning. Uh, welcome to the panel discussion. So, uh, Jay, sir. Thank uh, you, thank you, sir. Nice to, to see you, sir. The participants. Thank you, thank you. Uh, <coughs> thank, uh, sir, thank are you. we audible to you, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very much audible. Uh, I am uh, in a car. I don't know. Some disturbance uh, will be there, but uh, if you are able to bear with that, I uh, can sure. continue. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sir. So, so actually, first I... of all, I would like sir, to yes. thank uh, the uh, SKU AAC for uh, really bringing this very important topic, how we can uh, promote the rural entrepreneurship startup ecosystem in uh, places like Anantapur. I totally agree with uh, what uh, Dr. Malarendi just now uh, mentioned, and also the previous uh, speaker, uh, her name... Uh, uh, started Maithili, yes. Uh, I, 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 I listen to only these two uh, panel speakers. Uh, so I totally agree with uh, both of them. So if you uh, analyze the startup ecosystem right from its uh, inception, why every company used to go to only Silicon Valley uh, way back in, uh, say, about the 90s or 80s, uh, this thing? Because there was an ecosystem. The ecosystem is the most important thing for any startup uh, uh, companies to survive, uh, succeed, uh, otherwise, uh, uh, without ecosystem, they can't uh, survive. That's the reason why, even even today, though other ecosystems have come up within USA, in the uh, Dallas, Texas area, Seattle area, some ecosystems have come. But still, Silicon Valley is the number one ecosystem for the startups because uh, within 100 meters, 100, uh, uh, may, maybe one kilometer range, you find all the top-notch uh, venture capitalists and the angel investors and all those people. And uh, I, I was told that most of this, uh, the investors, they don't want to travel uh, more than a few kilometers to invest uh, in a company. That is the kind of a mindset uh, they have. Whatever it is, the things are changing.
but that used to be a mindset and uh, most of the startups they used to get located because funding is the most important thing funding is like oxygen for any startup without funding you may have great uh, ideas and the great technologies but you can't start without the oxygen so oxygen was available plenty in silicon valley that's one of the reasons why most of the startups that's the one they the second reason yeah. pardon me the, the second reason why silicon valley became uh, the so famous for the uh, technology uh, incubators and uh, accelerators and the startups because somebody wants to hire a cto or a, a product uh, architect and all that. they are readily available you know that really such i mean within a week's time i can uh, recruit right from ceo cto uh, then the product architect the entire team within a, one week i can assemble the other reason uh, they they allowed the moon moonlighting moonlighting means when i am working for google i am allowed to work on a uh, my own project and uh, that flexibility most of the companies have given and uh, in fact i have seen uh, uh, one startup company in uh, in san jose area they used to work in cisco so they used to convince cisco management look i mean uh, this technology may be useful for cisco, uh, cisco after uh, one year or so so they cisco used to okay go you go ahead and uh, start your uh, startup we will also fund and uh, later on there is a possibility that we can acquire because the big companies uh, they cannot really uh, i mean move like startup uh, because a lot of bureaucracy like a government uh, department or any big public sector the bureaucracy the same bureaucracy is there in uh, big multinational companies so they cannot really i mean implement those ideas uh, that quickly so they used to encourage okay you go and uh, uh, start this uh, new idea we will find uh, uh, every company like the cisco ventures intel ventures uh, microsoft ventures every company they got their own uh, venture capital and they used to encourage uh, the startups uh, to be funded by them uh, so that they can acquire them and uh, later on uh, they can uh, integrate that uh, this thing so that was also available in uh, uh, silicon valley so people were available funding was available big companies were available so enter and market see uh, if i go, if i got a great product i i used to give this example uh, to many people like uh, uh, the pandavas uh, this thing the five people uh, uh this thing each one i got their own abilities but arjuna is the one which, who led uh, the kurukshetra war to the victory so uh, i used to uh, compare that uh, with the uh, five uh, five m uh, principles when i was uh, promoting the uh, startup uh, culture in uh, vizag and uh, hyderabad the five m culture the center one was the market access even if i got a great uh, product even if i got a great funding if you don't have the market access you will die so uh, i i used to give my own example when we started uh, portal player we, we we had a great idea then we assembled a great team then we got uh, nearly 86 million dollar funding was available at one point of time after september 11th uh, uh, due to some reasons uh, this thing we were not able to really survive because uh, the chip uh, uh, startup every respin of the silicon chip it used to cost us more than a million dollars so we we hardly had a few million dollars in our bank and we know that we can't survive because we were going to japan thinking that japan is the country where consumer electronics and we had at least a 10 design means sony panasonic sharp you name it all these companies they like our product and they said yes it's a great product so they gave the design win and we worked with them for some time but they none of them were able to take this product for Uh, production so whatever little money it is all getting exhausted and we were about to close literally we closed the portal for india and we started a startup company services company called phoenix services because there was no money and i can't uh, lose all these people fortunately steve jobs i mean they wanted to get into consumer electronics uh, at that point of time from macintosh they want to move into consumer electronics and they found out that uh, portal player has got a product and uh, that product can be uh, utilized for them to introduce the apple ipod and in one meeting uh, steve jobs took the decision that yes we are going to use portal player uh, technology and within six months we were able to see uh, the apple releasing our uh, the apple ipod using uh, uh, our technology in fact the entire technology except the front wheel uh, which was uh, apple's uh, design the firmware the initial operating system uh, the silicon chip the, all the codecs everything uh, was uh, given by uh, portal player 
that's how we were able to uh, survive and afterwards we took the company public and all that why i'm telling this example market access without that call from steve jobs our company would have died we had uh, 86 million dollars funding we had great teams one in seattle one in silicon valley one in hyderabad uh, so to this middle game is very very important than markets so that's where i mean uh, uh, the why people used to go to silicon valley those ecosystem was there if somebody has got a product they can go i mean play golf uh, uh, golf course and play golf with uh, some ceos in the golf course itself i mean they will make some connections and uh, they say okay i have this product i have a solution uh, maybe it's uh, suitable to you and uh, that's how the business used to uh, transform because of this one reason silicon valley became what it is uh, today and today if you see there several uh, such ecosystem for example uh, in india except bangalore no other uh, uh, startup ecosystem survived because the same reason bangalore had uh, all the venture capitalists bangalore had all the fortune 100 fortune 500 uh, r&d companies were there uh, the manpower was available everything was available and because of that I mean, many startups started working from uh, bangalore so when we started uh, in hyderabad our startup uh, journey in hyderabad in way back in 2001 that time i was the president of tai hyderabad we ran uh, tai isb along with the indian school of business we ran uh, a conference called tai isb connect we had a business plan competition uh, uh, at that uh, conference we invited bus- uh, business plans from various uh, people then finally the venture capitalists who were on the jury they were telling j we will not come to hyderabad because the quality of all this uh, uh, whatever the companies who submitted uh, the business plans and all that not even a, a, a theoretical uh, uh, even a student in a in a college can uh, produce a much better uh, business plan if this is the kind of quality deals uh, we don't want to come to hyderabad waste our time and all that they never used to come the ecosystem was not there but over a period of time we were able to say, we uh, see what were the main ecosystem which helped uh, hyderabad uh, what it is there was no angel uh, investors were the, were not there uh, what we have done is we created hyderabad angels through hyderabad angels we started giving money to uh, startup ideas and all that so that is one of the ecosystem uh, component then a uh, lot of uh, fortune 100 fortune 500 r&d companies they started moving into hyderabad where a lot of architects uh, used to be a lot of nrs who wants to come back from uh, us uh, working in uh, uh either microsoft or uh, google uh, headquarters and all that they returned with a lot of experience so architecture level the cto level people were available in uh, hyderabad and incubation space again uh, thanks to the telangana government uh, they really uh, took a decision to have a t hub uh, kind of incubator come accelerator all these things were uh, part of the uh, ecosystem of this thing. because of that the hyderabad is now coming in the radar of the uh, startup ecosystem and a lot of uh, companies are coming again still marketing is still the issue a lot of companies they struggle they have a great product they a great team and also good funding many startups they think that by raising a, a, a 1 million dollar series a funding that they end of the story and they they, they think that they have succeeded in the game no uh, many companies they die even after raising a series b funding so whatever uh, uh, that uh, lady panelists uh, i uh, was uh, telling the focus is very very important lot of startups uh, they have 100 uh, different ideas they not, not only they concentrate on this and uh, while concentrating on this product they will also think about uh, xyz uh, problems and all that that focus is uh, very very important for the uh, startup companies to succeed and also the market access again uh, thanks to uh, the whatever is happening in the india the entire india is going digital uh, in particular i am referring to the technology entrepreneurship and technology startup ecosystem uh, within the country every state is going for, uh, spending uh, billions of dollars for the e governance and bringing the digital uh, to every aspect whether the digital payments or digital approvals digital uh, uh, governance everything is uh, happening digital so a lot of opportunities are uh, getting created within the states like telangana andhra pradesh uh, karnataka tamil nadu and all that so this is the ideal system which has happened there's a reason why uh, even cities like uh, hyderabad is also has become a uh, now coming back to why anantapur can become uh, a startup uh, uh, ecosystem vibrant ecosystem see we have to choose one focus area like for example in uh, texas uh, 
uh, this thing. They have chosen cybersecurity as a focus area. They invited all the educational institutions, all the startups. They created ecosystem around cybersecurity that became the hub for many cybersecurity. Um, similarly, Anantapur uh, SK University, uh, you, see, you need to choose one focus area. Thanks to uh, Nagbush Raju and uh, all the team members of uh, AC, you have chosen uh, the rural uh, 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 whatever the entrepreneurship opportunities, particularly agri and food processing and all that. I think that is a good area. If only if you can uh, drive that uh, rural-based uh, startup, rural-based innovation and entrepreneurship, as uh, Professor Mallaradi was mentioning, a uh, lot of opportunities are there in the villages, in the rural areas. So you, you have to identify who are the angel uh, investors who can come and look at those uh, startup companies uh, who are uh, getting incubated in the SKUAC campus. So that money is very, very important. So you have to uh, go and invite uh, not only angel investors and also maybe the venture capitalists to come to uh, AAC, uh, this thing. And also you should get connected to the forums like uh, Thai Hyderabad. Uh, in fact, Manohar Reddy is the now current president of uh, Thai Hyderabad. He's readily willing to enable the entire uh, the charter members to come and help uh, the mentor the startups. Uh, this mentoring is very, very important. If you get that kind of a mentoring, they will also provide the market access for whatever uh, ideas uh, you have. So the market anyway is there. Today, uh, thanks to COVID, uh, people are, uh, who are working in Microsoft, uh, Google kind of companies, they're working from Batalpalli. They're all working for the last one year. They're happily working because the ecosystem is there. High-speed bandwidths are there. Everything is there. Plus, they are uh, with their parents and all that. Reason. So today, I mean, distance is not the issue today. Whether you are in uh, Silicon Valley uh, or you are in Seattle or you are in Batalpalli or you are in Anantapur, with, uh, I mean, if you have the infrastructure, high-speed uh, internet links, a lot of people are willing to come back uh, to, the, to the small uh, uh, villages and all that. This is the like ideal opportunity for SKU, AIC to really attract such people. For example, Partha, who was working for Accenture in uh, Bangalore, now he has come back and started the Ananta Naturals, and he's doing very well. I think uh, he has got a stall uh, in uh, your uh, campus itself. So such people, you can invite them because they have the market connect. Again, I'm emphasizing market. Why Partha is successful? Because he was able to connect to the markets. Because uh, uh, when he was in Bangalore, he was able to connect to them. And because of that, he's successful. Market access is very, very important. So you should invite such people to come to AIC, SKU and see how they can be incubated. And you, you should actually somehow make, make sure that one or two companies are going to be globally successful. Then everybody will come to AAC SKU by going to AAC SKU. Not only I get some ideas, not only I get some funding, and also there is a market, uh, this thing, there are mentors who are going to mentor. Uh, all those things will happen, provided you create that ecosystem. Again, I, I agree with uh, uh, the lady panelist who was mentioning focus, focus, and focus. If you focus on one such area, create that uh, vibrant ecosystem, everything will happen. I wish you all the best. Sir, uh, that was an amazing uh, elaborative, you know, uh, 360 degree overlook about the, you know, challenges faced by um, ecosystem, how you can overcome. Again, you know, coming back to Maithili, so, you know, taking the cue from uh, uh, JSR, investment is the oxygen. So now, how do you, you provide oxygen to, you know, these uh, uh, rural entrepreneurs. When I say rural entrepreneurs, not that uh, their idea is rural, but the entrepreneurs themselves are from rural side. Because one challenge as an incubation center I am facing is they don't have the acumen of you know making business plans, pitch elevator page. In fact, communication itself is a constraint here. So that's what Dr. Mallaridi was also you know you know in, 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 they were telling. That is the reason they are not able to go global because we have one of the person here, uh, you know, is making amazing mushrooms. Right, but he's not able to communicate to the investors. That's the challenge faced. Now, how do you think these these constraints can be addressed? Uh, you know, uh, as an incubation center, where where can we play that role? Um, where can AIC SKU play that role? Yeah, in general incubation center, but in particular AIC, yes, definitely. What what would be your suggestion? How we can help them to reach out to you? Uh, you know, in you know in you know showcasing them to you. All right. Um, so I think you've identified it correctly that uh, very often they might have a good idea, but communication is lacking, um, in which case you could have some uh, 
sessions that you all host for them, development sessions. Uh, I have noticed with some other incubators um, where I have attended as uh, a panelist on their uh, demo days, as, as a participant on their demo days, I noticed that uh, all their startups more or less pitched with a similar framework. And I later asked the organizer that, you know, uh, why did you do that? And he said, we did that for two reasons. One is to standardize uh, the information that goes out so that they are on equal footing. And two is, he said, to give them guidance as to how to structure their pitch. So I've seen others do that. Typically, when a company comes to us, they're a, a, little, um, a little beyond that stage in the sense that they're at least MVP ready and we are evaluating them on, on their pitches and we help them to refine their pitch, but they already have some pitch in place. Uh, but what I've noticed with, um, as I said, with some other incubators that I've gone to where they're really just uh, working out of universities or, or even ALC Hyderabad in Hyderabad, actually, um, they've actually given sort of formats uh, that and, and explain to the, to the startup in a very uh, almost university-like fashion that, you know, these are the six or seven points that you must have on your slide. And how you express them, you have, uh, you have uh, flexibility in how you want to tell your story, but make sure that you cover this minimum. That removes the barrier of uh, basic communication. Everybody doesn't need to be uh, fluent in Hindi or English or whatever is the common language. But if they have been able to convey the idea and the concept well enough, uh, across the four or five parameters people are usually looking at, then I think they're still up for uh, consideration. So, so you mean to say that language can, should not be a barrier. In fact, if we can literally help them in the communication, that yeah. should do it. Because I've seen and pictures, I've seen in dual good. English. In North, I have seen some people do it in Hindi, mixing with Hindi and English, pitching in so that they're impressing upon the investors. Because I don't see investors will look at language, actually. They'll be looking at the plan and the communication, exactly. right? In fact, when we, are on, on, uh, when we are reviewing companies and they are pitching to us, and we can sense that the entrepreneur is sometimes more comfortable in um, a regional language, if the panel is comfortable with it, we always encourage them to go in the language that they are comfortable in so that they can express. But it, at least if it's, um, if it's sort of Hindi, it's easier if the panel is mixed. Otherwise, sometimes we even uh, consider regional languages. And as you said, the main point is have their points come through. And that is something that AICSP, you can definitely guide them as to what are the kind of, you, you know, you can maybe have a bunch of investors come in and do like a rough demo day with them before their real demo day to bring through what are the points that need to be covered. Right. Great. Uh, great, Maitri. Thank you for that, you know, uh, uh, thought. And uh, uh, again, coming to Dr. Sheshadri, see uh, here, again, uh, we talked about investment, we talked about uh, information and banker empowerment. Now, the key, another key issue when it comes to rural startups is I have seen, uh, again, uh, uh, knowledge, understanding the depth of the, because you are a microbiologist, you are a scientist, you know, you, you would be able to answer it better. Uh, how it is important uh, uh, for a founder or an entrepreneur, which takes precedence, innovation or the good business model, right? Both they lack in the village, in the, from a rural startups, a college in the third three city, both actually they lack both understanding the innovations and, and bridging that gap to the you know societal need and converting it to good business model. So when you're starting your entrepreneurial journey, what takes precedence? Okay, thank you for this question. Before that, I just would like to tell a few things. Come there, yes. uh, hope I am audible, right? Am I audible? Hello? Am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, sir. yes, yes you are yeah. audible. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, thing is, uh, yes, that was a good question. But since you, I try to link three things. One is, you said you are in a rural setting. Second thing, you want to work on a technologies for the rural areas. Anantapur area. You have a rural development trust talking about people talking about a lot of rural opportunities available. How are we going to link all these things is one big thing you need to really look into. Why I'm telling you is, even rightly you only said in between one of your questions you said, when people from IAMs and IITs are coming up setting up companies in agriculture and rural areas, and why our people are not doing this? And if you ask me this question, the one question is Normally, when even the best of the knowledge, if we have our families, we will not appreciate. This is what is happening in our mindset. The attitude, that's why I brought it. So we need to change the way the students think. And also we need to change the way the faculties think. I, I brought it this. Even my earlier presentation, I said, 
faculties are the real mentors and even you know you asked the language as a big barrier for this presentation i don't see language as a barrier for the presentation provided there is a good hand holding happening from the faculty side and even the incubators also identify right mentors mostly the even proposal writers i would say even i am also associated with another entity called bharti university trust it is part of cii right it has offices in delhi chennai hyderabad and bhuvaneshwar pune aurangabad azam every area and it's a 100% non profit entity helping the entrepreneurs at the grassroots level what we do is even i am i am the chairperson for the mentor advisory panel there so what happens we try to identify the entrepreneur entrepreneur don't have to have any knowledge about writing a banking proposal we help people bringing to be bring people who are in the banking industry who are in the banking industry to handle them to prepare a proposal and take them forward one and second thing we don't want to worry about best innovative technology coming out of the students even it could be me to technology but there should be applicable in the rural areas that is more important and we need india needs lot of me to technologies also we talked about silicon valleys we talked about many many big things iits all these things but when we talk about the rural areas we need to think of the knowledge quotient of the students coming out of the centers i mean the, the university campus itself and in that area the faculties especially again again i am pinning this the faculties play a very major role in shaping the thought process of the students the skilling are the students setting their hands in the soil means it's not agriculture soil i'm telling even be it electronics be it civil be it is chemical engineering are they allowed to work in the machineries or are, are they permitted to work in the basic knowledge areas and laboratories this only give them the feel where exactly they are how the ecosystem works so unless otherwise we have the feel we will not able to identify the right gap that is available for us to address otherwise what happens most of the students come and knock our doors just like that pick thread from the different ecosystems they even try to ape sun microsystems or even our bill gates all we people and that kind of say i want i have an idea i want to do that but most of the time these are all ideas fail miserably so if at all this should happen this should the correction should happen in the mindset of the students from the department side and the faculty side and the incubators and the departments should seamlessly work together here the students should be allowed to seamlessly go between the departments and the incubators and the management and knock the doors we should open the barriers not the gates i would say there are a lot of gates but we should open the not the gates had barriers only if you do that there is empty number of possibilities we can, i i have seen lot of students coming with brimming ideas but most of the time the fear factor and the gates lot of gates that never allow them to go past the gates so we should open that thank you i know basically you are touching upon the policy you know at the college level and management level to enable them to go seamlessly interact you know and uh, democratize that's that's uh, that's the thing you are yes sir about, right? when you say you are working in the rural area what is there a farmer should talk to the farmer right a farmer should go and knock the doors of the banks when a farmer is shying go and talking to the banks how come he can get the loan for that the same way i will think the student also should be in a position to go casually into all the departments knock the doors and second thing i see is the collaboration the collaboration is the most important thing team building even that is not happening among the faculties the two faculty if they could able to join hands and come up with the wonderful ideas and students also will pick a thread out of this and try to move forward so if this is not happening in the departments and the faculties how come we can imbibe that in the minds of the students also so this correct. we need to allow them to think through and come up with a lot of uh, iterations correct sir wonderful sir thank you you know uh, now you know when when we are talking about collaboration with the incubation centers now incubation becomes a central stage and it becomes like hub and spoke model so you now the question again leads to james expertise now okay. how you know, incubators need to be self sustainable if they want to do you know all these activities they cannot be under any you know constraints and restrictions so that's where section 8 company so many things so many such uh, policy you know overhauls have happened but but all said and done unless the incubation center becomes a self sustainable business itself no you cannot uh, you know uh, you know ensure the success of the startups 
right so how do you how do you you know suggest that uh, incubation center become self sufficient sir and this question becomes relevant in terms of the rural ecosystem because in uh, in urban setup like bangalore hyderabad the kind of startups exits happen quick and uh, you know valuations happen good exits happen we get our returns but when it comes to rural the kind of returns we get uh, and the amount of money we put it doesn't really match so the you know self uh, the when you when you want to become self sustainable it would take very long time in rural ecosystems so what do you suggest uh, you know what kind of revenue models we should build up uh, is this is this question to whom james sir james 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 okay uh, in fact uh, sustainability uh, it's a very uh, this concept sustainability when you mean uh, based on monetary or uh, revenue aspects i don't think we have records or uh, research done or any evidence on any incubator anywhere in the world uh, sustainable on its own from the incubation operations uh, i'm not sure about that maybe other uh, researchers and faculty or in the field they can uh, give examples if anything on uh, uh, such a case is available but they can what they can best do uh, instead of monetary sustainability is to make sure that in the infrastructure that they create is sustainable and that sustainability is uh, instead of uh, focusing on financing finance capital i would suggest if they can create a social capital that would be the uh, sustainability factor for incubators and for that to happen they need to create networks and uh, as uh, dr sheshadri was earlier saying the one of the most important aspect of uh, incubator is to create the right networks for the incubators for the entrepreneurs for the innovators to succeed and this i have seen from iitm uh, incubation uh, centers is uh, they are able to create the networks the right networks either from banking sector or from the industry sector or from the government sector or any sector that you imagine to tap into and let the entrepreneur grow through the network network effect so therefore uh, um, what i would suggest for any incubator is to develop networks across different domains either to start with uh, uh, this is also a case where i have seen uh, we even within the university system incubators are very often isolated from the faculties from the departments sir. right sir thank you sir sir jay sir you want to add something sir Come yeah on. actually this is a typical problem uh, uh, particularly for the rural uh, incubator like uh, uh, as sku see what generally what the incubators they do i visited many incubators uh, uh, in israel what they do is uh, they identify the right kind of companies and uh, they provide all the ecosystem uh, including bringing market access and also for all the services they take some uh, sweat equity uh, equity in the in those companies and when the company uh, uh, succeeds automatically the incubator also gets a lot of uh, apart from yes. for other charges uh, they charge uh, uh, nominal uh, uh, cost and all that uh, this thing very nominal cost but the main sustainable money uh, what they get is out of the equity that what uh, they pick up in those uh, startup companies so that's where i mean they uh, they create lot of uh, uh, reserves for the incubator uh, why combinator also uh, one such example uh, this is how they become uh, globally successful uh, in fact a uh, lot of startups uh, they go and compete uh, to become part of the y combinator because uh, being in y combinator itself uh, is become a big taboo for many uh, startup companies so you, you need to create that kind of a success stories that's, that's the reason why i've been telling uh, professor raju also somehow you have to identify you have to invite one or two such uh, startup companies to your uh, ecosystem and you put all your effort make sure that those two companies are really successful at least in the indian scale then not only that uh, you are uh, uh, incubator get that high visibility that going to skaac i mean chances of my company become successful and aut- automatically if you have a provision to pick up some sweat equity in that uh, this thing whenever uh, they go and raise the series a funding you can take their exit 
and that money that whatever the stocks that uh, the thing that can go into the reserve reserves service. so like that you have to innovate uh, so there is no one standard rule uh, uh, this thing how uh, you you have to create a sustainable engine for yourself because when you are allowing uh, the startups to become uh, innovative even uh, incubator like you also had to become more in innovative you cannot uh, think of following uh, you cannot become a copycat because just uh, just because why combinator or followed one uh, rule you, sh uh, you should not think of copying you find out your own uh, uh, kind of a model how you can create a sustainable engine that's where you need to have a right kind of mentors to suggest uh, you why don't you look at uh, this model and create uh, this kind of opportunities and all that so you you need to innovate you need to uh, create uh, that aura and uh, this thing definitely if you have the will and uh, the way uh, skuis is progressing from time to time i'm seeing a lot of growth potential uh, uh, in this center it, it can become one of the best rural uh, incubators in the country itself so that opportunity is there but you need to uh, see how you can make it happen so basically you are saying incubator should do the walk the talk we saying you know startups to raise funds we should also you know we we ourselves should think like a startup you know how how we can raise our revenue you are a startup you are yeah, exactly. yourself you are a startup, startup. so exactly. more than the startup companies coming to you you should be the biggest innovator and you yes. should innovate new ways of uh, how your incubator can become a grand success so that's where your entrepreneurship really uh, becomes very critical yes yes and that would really that is set an example to the startups as well you know right absolutely absolutely <laughs> sir great sir thank you for that no thought no i i think uh, no we are coming to the fag end of the discussion and uh, one uh, important uh, point uh, you know we would like to ask dr malaridi again say all it boils down to the per person who is working at the bottom of the pyramid because as uh, you know when you say market uh, in the 5m the middle m market uh, access here the in rural entrepreneurship market access would be the you know uh, especially rural setup where the people landless people are a small agrarian or youth you know graduated youth staying in the village so they they become the major chunk of the the market here uh, so uh, malari dis in your view point now in as a concluding remark how how do you witness ananthapur being an entrepreneurial hub you now uh, you are already seeing the sprouts coming in ananthapur you know in asc you have seen in rdt you have seen nadi you have seen and some other you know few things you have seen now how, what would be the vision can you can you put a vision statement for all of us you know uh, how entrepreneurial ecosystem can enable ananthapur become a you know hub Uh, in of innovation especially in rural sector well uh, shivakiran garu that is a very tall order that you have given me but what i would uh, <laughs> i would say is that uh, see uh, how we have to approach this uh, market part of it is i think that the example i have explained gives us a good uh, uh, example you know good good idea into it is because you see local markets are there if we can start with local markets or what is locally sold as much as possible from there organically it can grow it can take to any extent off roads because the entrepreneurs vision also will keep really growing and they will their horizon will be opened up much more off roads i think to start with my uh, take would be that we will have to really bank on the local markets there are so many things that local people are consuming that are not really branded and brands are not a competition in that sense so we will have to look for kind of products anta madre ikkada endukante madre madarana vay pisan tostunnar anta ekku manchi nasme oka degara compete and i think we will have to really locally manufacture and locally start uh, uh, finding a market for them and that is the beginning i would say that is the beginning from where it, i think it can grow really like uh, anything there are many things that we can uh, think of like that many products that we can think of like that where they don't really require a very high level of skill but some kind of a skill is required and which rural people can master over a period you know with some kind of a training and so on and then i think we will be able to capture that that's how i would approach because we have tried in rdt i am i am not really uh, uh, reluctant to share that we have tried in last 50 years so many products i tell you 50 products we may have tried uh, but they are all based on the outside market not even a single one has succeeded as of now 
you know, but whatever we have tried based on local market, they have been they have been successful. But in a number of uh, you know, uh, with a number of entrepreneurs, so we will have to really see small small entrepreneurs. Every village, one or two entrepreneurs, you know, like that. I think then so many villages and so many entrepreneurs, then they will from there. God knows, I mean, the sky is the limit from that kind of. Once they start and the startup really works to start with, I think the sky is the limit for them. I think that is how I would see. Awesome. Uh, that's uh, great, sir. Uh, I think, uh, uh, and as a last of two minutes uh, we have, if anybody wants to, you know, add a few points, uh, panel members, you are welcome. We'll be closing in another five minutes, maybe two, three minutes we have. Uh, after that, we can take one or two questions and we'll close it. I have only one point to add to here, sir. Yes, sir. Since you said you are working in the rural area, agriculture, and all these things. And uh, interestingly, the pandemic also has given us opportunity to myself and uh, Mr. James. We two together almost we reviewed more than 300 proposals in this pandemic. All these things are from IIT to IIM, IIMs to NITs to many, many organizations, right? Even if you are having entrepreneurs with wonderful ideas, we will be happy to review that and take them forward next level also, if that is really suitable. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. That would be really great, sir. We'll we'll definitely you know connect uh, you know uh, with both of you regarding that and see how we can collaborate and uh, you know showcase our startups to you. I just so wanted yes, sir, to, want to add, sir. yeah, I yes, just sir. wanted to tell uh, about yes. this five uh, M uh, for any ecosystem to survive. The uh, let me explain what is this five M uh, model. Uh, first M is the manpower. First of all, uh, right. you need to find the uh, right kind of. Uh, uh, the founders who have got the right interest. So M is the, the manpower. The second, for them to really start any new idea, uh, other than uh, what is uh, required is the funding, either angel funding or uh, uh, VC funding, whatever it is. So second M is uh, very, very important uh, for the company to start. So third M, I, as I mentioned earlier also, it's a market access. It's a very, very crucial uh, for the company to uh, survive. The fourth M, is the mentoring. Mm -hmm. See, you need a lot of mentors, so the local mentors, the global mentors. Uh, first of all, a lot of people, uh, uh, they will be uh, ideating something which is actually not uh, going to be scaled up and all that. If it is not a scale up plan, no VC, no uh, investor will invest in that plan. So you need a mentor who can tell, no, no, this idea is not a good idea. You drop this or you probably modify this. So mentoring is very, very important. The last M is the meetup events. Places like Anantapur, like what you are doing, creates this kind of a meetup events through webinars, through conferences. The startup companies, for example, if you have uh, 10 uh, uh, agriculture uh, uh, rural uh, uh, startup companies in SKU, uh, Anantapur uh, in university campus, you can't expect them to go to Delhi and demonstrate their product and all that. So because they don't have that kind of a money. Uh, they don't have enough money to travel by air uh, uh, and stay in uh, Delhi and... Uh, demonstrate the capability. So you need to bring those people to SKUAIC, like what you have done. Today, I think a uh, lot of people are Everyone coming. Uh, uh, just now, uh, Gardav Steel, uh, Sridharan was here, and uh, uh, the other uh, great people are coming. When they come, they see, okay, they talk to the entrepreneurs. They probably they will get connected like uh, Kurush, to win the Kurukshetra war, or the startup company, Kurukshetra war, mm -hmm. to become successful. The Pancha Pandavas is very, very important. All these five M's right. are like Pancha Pandavas. Mm -hmm. And in that, Arjuna is the one middle, the middle M, the market actors, mm -hmm. who actually uh, may, made this Kurukshetra war to successful. Without Arjuna, there is no uh, Pancha Pandavas who wouldn't have uh, succeeded. So like Arjuna, what uh, he did, here also market access is very, very important. That's where you need to collaborate, uh, talk to people like uh, Malla Redigar and others, uh, see that uh, how you can uh, create uh, the local ecosystem. Uh, as Malaradi was uh, mentioning, today everybody is talking about new buzzword in the industry is local. Think global, but first of all, start from local. First, you can't opportunities any choose local opportunities, Malaradi got it. That can be a pilot. Then afterwards, you take them global. So today, that is the formula. The global is the formula. So I think uh, AIC, SKU, Anantapur is the right time, right place. And right people are helping you. And definitely, I'm going to see you a successful incubator in the world. Sorry, you are saying Panchapandas 5Ms. 
and uh, you know if i may add uh, now you know mentor uh, would be the uh, krishna <laughs> yeah you need one krishna ah yeah. uh, i i krishna i don't think all the pandavas but uh, i can help you need one krishna also uh, to make yes. sure that one was win the war yes uh, krishna is ac ac is krishna <laughs> yes, okay. that was a flattering that was a flattering uh, comment sir thank you so, absolutely uh, okay sir great sir uh, so thank you you know all the panelists so that to boil uh, down the whole discussion it's under focus fund 5ms fraternity that is about collaboration and the end we should not forget the empathy that was we that's where we started as empathy now you know we are ending with a note that no market and uh, scalability so that should be the journey of any startup and it cannot be linear it has to be circular economy so with that note uh, you know uh, we'll uh, sign off uh, from this uh, panel discussion and uh, okay. the good number of questions are there uh, due to the paucity of time we will answer to you you know uh, if you have any specific question to specific speaker let us know we will uh, you know write to them and get back to you or it's a face is generic question we can answer to you you know that would be the way and thank you dear all the panelists uh, dr sheshadri uh, ms james dr malari digaru uh, jsr and maithili left early because of she had some other engagements so maithili also so all the five of you you know really thank you for sparing your time sharing your expertise and learning with us and definitely you know uh, this panel discussion has given us uh, key points in which you know uh, assq could work and make ourselves uh, you know no no top incubators as uh, you know jsr you know put a high expectations on us so we'll definitely you know work towards that so thank you sir all of you you know have a good day and uh, if at your leisure please visit our stalls virtually you know to interact with our startups and we-